Security, Adam Savage here at Prop Stores Warehouse in Southern California. Hello, Brandon. Hey, Adam, good to see you. Good to see you, man. This is a personal piece of yours, am I it correct? Is. Yes, this is one of mine. This is a favorite of mine. This is TikTok from Return to Oz. If you have not seen Return to Oz, Walter Murch's excursion into the Wizard of Oz franchise, it is a masterpiece, it is surpassingly weird, and TikTok is one of the most beautiful robots in film. Honestly, I can't believe this is yours. It's such a cool design, and one of the things that first drew me to the movie is it's a lot of the same creative people that worked on the Star Wars film. So mm -hmm. Gary Kurtz, producer, and then uh, actually the, the Creature crew, some of them are direct overlap with Star Wars. Not all of them. The team was led by Lyle Conway, okay. who also did like Little Shop of Horrors and of mm -hmm. course Dark Crystal, and they built some fantastic creatures, the star of which I think is TikTok, and this is a costume somebody wore. This is a costume someone wore. I remember watching the behind the scenes documentaries when this film came out, so I as soon as you showed this to me, I was like, oh my God, I remember the guy's legs were in this and he was a contortionist. His name was Michael Sunland, and he was all the way upside down inside this thing, walking backwards in the order to make it walk forwards. Apparently at the beginning of production was 15 minutes at a time. By the end, he could survive in here for up to an hour. That does not sound comfortable. No. <laughs> yeah, that does they, not sound like a place you want to be. They described that as they pulled it apart to let him out each time, it was this rush of hot air. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, it you... is. I mean, it's all, it's it's carbon fiber. You know, it's, it's all hard materials. It's carbon fiber and there's like a metal trim there. And like you say, uh, you know, there was a guy in there walking around. Right now there's a frame in the legs because yeah. otherwise they're just floppy. You know, oh, right, it needs the support. Yeah. So we built a frame for it. And you can see, I'll pivot it here. It does actually spin at the waist. Oh, wow. And, it, and there's a bearings bearing. in there. Yeah. Oh my God. And so the whole thing does come to life. And then of course, the head was radio controlled. Yeah. The arms he could operate from inside. I know you like to pull things apart. I know that about you, Adam. Yes. Do you want to look at the inside of it? I so want to look Should at the inside. Pull it apart? All right, let's see if we can. Uh, All right. This is where we go to time lapse of disassembling okay. TikTok. So, oh, right. Okay. So I can see where they'd have the mechanics for moving the eyes. Yeah, most of that was stripped when mm -hmm. this was found. Most of that. But I think the head will lift straight off if you just right. pull it straight up. Yep. Oh, my God. That's an original servo there in the neck. Let me just set the helmet down. Oh, wow. That's a big one. Look at that. That is about the biggest servo you could find in the uh, in the 80s. Yeah, that's old school, huh? Yeah, that is the kind of servo they'd use to turn R2-D2's head. Okay, it's that like makes a sense. big, fat, yeah. high torque. Yeah, and then if we just give it a little pop. Oh, right off. wow. Oh, there's still his straps in there. Yeah, the straps. Oh my God, and, and these check are out hand the, actuators. Yeah, look at that. <gasps> All this oh. stuff totally custom made. The little motors are to turn the keys on the back, the winding keys. The little so motor. the winds oh my are gosh, shots. Yeah. And this is all original. Uh, wow. I don't even know what it says there. Main per, dur, main, dur. main something. Yeah. Um, and I think you can see up by your right hand, you can see a number two that's creeping through on the, on yep, the yellow, yep. yellow so this carbon was fiber, one, fiberglass. Yeah, right there. And I know I, in, if you read the Cinefix magazine about this film, they talk about working with the materials and the plasters, trying to get this thing as light as possible, because obviously a very difficult thing to walk around in. So I think it actually is carbon fiber, which is like an early use of a type of carbon fiber. And when you, um, if you put your arm on the lever and squeeze it, you can see, see if you can get in there. Let's see if I can do this. If you can, if you can puppeteer the arm. <gasps> oh, wow, that mechanism's, okay, so this mechanism still works beautifully. Like that's about, aside from a little bit of a spring return, that would be a totally acceptable mechanism today. And this one is over 40 years old. Yeah, and then if you pivot it, I think you'll get the full, yeah. Wow. I mean, how cool is that? Oh, wow. So he's basically in there operating the arms with these remote controls. <sighs> I can't believe it still functions. When Brandon. I saw pictures of this at first, you know, my first thought was, well, is it real? And it had yeah. been repainted. But when I saw the interior of it and I saw those straps in there and the mechanisms for the arms, it, there's no way it was a replica. I mean, this is totally the real thing. I know? have had this happen where I've looked at something like an eBay auction and I wasn't sure. And then I came across some detail and I was like, yep. I know it's because original. it's too weird that yes. no no replica person would ever build it that way. It's like a total on the fly special effects thing. That's original. That's the original plaque for the this mechanical is, man. 
That is an incredible piece in and of itself. Would be a, 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 a prop replica you would be worthy of selling. This totally. is beautiful. The mechanical man machine plate. It's funny you say that because I think they did some as crew gifts. Oh, did they really? And also the chest badges. The chest badge that's on it actually is not original. It's one of those crew gifts that they gave out, which was the same exact thing, same exact casting. Sure, sure. That's been yeah. refitted to it. So it has been restored, especially the finish. And it's a real tricky finish. When you go through the film carefully, you can see obviously there's a few of them. Mm -hmm, you can start mm -hmm. to pick them out based on their weathering pattern. Oh. Oh. And you go, oh, there's number one, there's number two. We just kind of tried to generally recreate the finish, get some of that sort of rainwater drip effect going on yeah, on yeah. The, the copper man. Wow. Um, I never thought I'd get to see one of these things up close and in person. I, I am astounded by the performer who was in here. He went on to actually be the host of a, a well-loved British show called Blue Peter. Oh, uh, I didn't know that, okay. Uh, and I literally remember being in my teens, looking at footage of him contorting himself to perform this character and being so amazed at how much personality came out of that contortion. Yeah, I mean, it's really the same concept as R2-D2, right? It's yeah. like, let's take a guy and put him in the most awkward suit that we can kind of get him to fit into <laughs> yeah, totally. and see if he can hobble around and make it work. And, and it did, I mean, on film, it's a great character, you know? Put the head back on, the radio control. He's even more interesting, headless. I think there was a deleted scene where TikTok's head is severed. Oh, I see. So these line up with the screws so that it can turn. Yes, yeah. Oh, that is great. Haven't taken the steps yet to try to get that working, but it would be cool well, if we could get the head Maybe I should make a special trip down here and help you get him powered up. That would be awesome. If we could bring the head to we life. Could, and... we, the eyes should be also, it should be possible to make the eyes functional. At least right, that we could lids. give him a motion mm -hmm. sensor. He could turn to look at you and mm -hmm. raise his eyebrows. Mm -hmm. That would be awesome, yeah. Yeah. Dude, he is really beautiful, Brandon. What an amazing piece. It also still needs the chains on the arms. So you oh, can see yes, the, it does. the chains are missing currently. I think we had some of the pulleys, but not all of them. So we had to rebuild some of the pulleys. We also rebuilt the fingers. I can show you here. That's an original TikTok finger, oh, wow. which is like individual segments oh. of brass or something. These are all hand machined. Is it? It looks like. But it also looks like it could have been, well, no, it's hard to say that it's a found product because it looks super custom for what it is. But that is some. Um... So we had a couple original fingers, but not all of them. So we basically yeah. made a decision to 3D print the ones that we needed to put the hands back together and just save the, these originals. Oh, and pieces of brazing. Glare evidence of the bra original brazing there. S some serious work. So it's like maybe they found plumbing parts and just put it together. Yeah. Or maybe they machined <laughs> it. I don't know. It's it's that great era of repurposing ingenuity, right? He's also, you know, similar to R2-D2, he's way bigger than I pictured him in my head. Oh, that's interesting. He's like way larger. Well, he's uh, he's elevated. He's on a dolly. Right. So yeah, helping. no, I get that. Yeah. I get some that. Some platform lifts it's there. Just, he's volumetrically quite large. True. Yeah, yeah. But I guess if you think about the guy doubled over in there, yeah. he's got to go somewhere, right? And so these keys, these would turn. These were the ones that were turning while he was operating. Right, because the idea is, you know, she, Faruza wow. Balk, has to wind him up in the yeah. movie. And the three separate actions, um, action, speaking, and thinking, and ah. then... In the film, when when one stops, one winds down, he stops, right. and so he's out of motion. So oh. it just look, it's a very bizarre movie. A oh, very it's bizarre one of movie. my all-time favorites. Really? Rosa Balk. You love it. Uh, yeah, it's a tremendous, yeah. weird, wonderful film. Yeah. I have several friends of mine who were animators on it. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, for the rock, the rock monster. Oh yes, of course. And that was all um, the famous. Uh, what is it? Um, Will Vinton? That was that Will Vinton. Yes, yeah, that who was, did the claymation. Yeah, Vinton up in Portland. Yes, yeah, what right, then right, became right. Leica, if I'm not incorrect. Right, or, there's a tie there. Yeah, something like that. Sort of that. like the Lucasfilm Pixar thing. Yeah, I don't know quite how it all shakes another. out. Yes, but yeah, right. Will Vinton was the original California Raisins animator yes, and of course, an amazing yeah. stop motion animator. We've had a few of his pieces in the past, always great all stuff. That. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Lyle Conway did the creatures on this, and also Norman Reynolds, oh, who of yeah. course famous from Star Wars yeah. and Raiders of the Lost Ark. He was the production designer for Gary Kirk. So I forgot it's all that. small world stuff. <sighs> Shot at L Street Studios, where they made Star Wars, where they made Indiana Jones. I it's, worked um, for Norman Reynolds on Bicentennial Man. Oh, I, I showed that. him several things and got his buy off this or that, this oh, or that. Wow. I felt like I was talking to like such a legend. Oh, that's know? awesome. I, I had no idea. Yeah. That was probably one of his last films. He I think he might retired be retired not too long after. I that. was. He was absolutely vital, and at the peak of his powers, I was amazed that he had 
at his history, given that I was working with him in 99. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, he was, when you look at those original Star Wars films, like his imprint is all over it. He designed the carbon freezing chamber set in Empire Strikes Back, which is probably one of the high points of set yeah, work yeah. in all the Star Wars films. I've, I've had lunch with him a couple of times. Oh. Awesome guy, awesome career. Um, and even though, you know, he didn't, he didn't necessarily conceive the look of this completely because it does trace back to the books, mm -hmm. the original Wizard of Oz series of books. Um, but obviously, Norman Reynolds oversaw the production design on all of Return to Oz and, and many other great films. Just amazing. Does it live in your house? It, it, it normally does. Actually, my <laughs> wife loves this one. This is, this is a favorite film of my wife, Jillian. So uh, this has been in her office in the past and maybe in her well, office in, again in the future. Every now and then you get one where your wife goes like, that's really cool. Oh, no, no. Totoro's been in my dining room for five years okay. because it's there one of go. my wife's right, favorite right. characters. And it's like, yeah. oh, it's acceptable. It can yeah. go in a main living space. Awesome. <laughs> I have the same issues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, thank you so much for showing me yeah. this. Yeah, I need to appreciate piece. it. Yeah. Wow. TikTok, everyone. Amazing. By the way, the barking you hear in the background is Maggie. She's right over there. <laughs>